This is a story of legends, men of great character and pride. It's the story of a franchise that rose from its humble beginnings to the pinnacle of the basketball world. This is the story of the Houston Rockets. The year was 1967. The Rolling Stones were the kings of rock and roll. The Rockets, they were just getting started in San Diego. Little did they know the real journey was about to begin. Sophie and I were out, uh, were ready to leave the house, the apartment, and I bent down, this is before remote control. <laughs> I bent down to push the button to shut the TV off and a bulletin came on that the San Diego Rockets have been sold to a group of owners in Houston, Texas. And I was like, my God, Texas is football country. What are we gonna be doing down there? Elvin Hayes, Rudy Tomjanovich, Calvin Murphy, Mike Newland, Stu Lance, those were the primary names that came here from San Diego. We had a marketing job as well as a playing job and it was arduous and taxing and took a while before we gained the consciousness of football people here in Houston. They really didn't have a place to call their home court. They played at the Astro Hall, the Astrodome. Behold the Astrodome, the most complete and magnificent sports palace ever conceived by man. We played wherever anyone would have a free gym in that particular night because our, we had no arena. We played at Hoffman's Pavilion. We played downtown. I forget what it's called, the Coliseum downtown. They played games in Waco, El Paso, San Antonio. They were operating with a San Diego Rockets schedule. Played in Houston one night, played in LA the next night, Washington, D.C., back to San Francisco, back to New York, and then back to Houston. That was the kind of schedule we had that first year. We were doing a, uh, a autograph signing uh, appearance and I'm there for you know a couple hours and I haven't get, I'm not getting any people to come up. Finally I see this little old lady approaching me and she sees the sign Houston Rockets and she just says oh my god I love you guys you guys are so special could I please uh, get an autograph and I'd like to have a picture with you so I come around the uh, table and she looks up to me and said my god you're so tall how do you fit in those spaceships you know she thought we were with NASA she thought I was an astronaut didn't know anything about the Houston Rockets live from the summit in Houston Texas by 1981, the Rockets had settled into their new home at the summit. And with Moses Malone leading the way, they had established themselves as a perennial playoff team. But was this a team capable of contending for the championship? The answer wouldn't come until the final game of the regular season. On the 81st game, we've got a game coming up, our last game of the season the next night, and we find out that Golden State has in fact lost, and we were in. We hit the playoffs on an up note. We were playing the best basketball we play all year. We, we were playing the last month of the season, so we kind of, when we did get in, we kind of rolled in. And what happened was we wound up matching up with L.A. Now, Kareem never liked to see Moses because he was so physical. So we beat L.A. twice in L.A., and so that kind of surprised everybody. And then we went on and played um, uh, San Antonio, which was a tough matchup, but we wound up beating San Antonio. Uh, I'll never forget doing that game in San Antonio, the game seven, when Calvin Murphy outdueled George Gervin in one of the classic performances of all time, and, and it, it was a game where uh, Murph just couldn't miss. Calvin was the most competitive guy I've ever ran into, and once he get into a role, you know, wasn't nobody in the league could stop him. Murphy's style and flair for the dramatic became the Rockets' trademark as they advanced to the NBA Finals for the first time ever. There, they would face the league's most storied franchise. So now we had to play the Celtics again, uh, like we had the year before, and we got to go up there. 
came back in game six and uh, gave a good reasonable account of ourselves, but uh, it was over and we, we lost in, in the sixth game. We, we played pretty good and you know, I, I was, we wasn't in really awe of them, but you know, they, they had a good team, they had a good team. It was just a great ride. Uh, the town got behind us. Uh, it was the first time that uh, there had been a major sports franchise play for a world championship. I, it was just a great time and everything was good. But in losing to the Celtics in six games, they learned a valuable lesson. In order to take the next step, they would need an infusion of youth and size. They got both. I have a big surprise for all of you. The Houston Rockets select Ralph Sampson, University of Virginia. The Houston Rockets, who are represented here by owner Charlie Thomas and his daughter Tracy, select Akeem Olajuwon of the University of Houston. With the Twin Towers standing tall on the Houston skyline, the Rockets once again rose to prominence. A couple years went by after I started looking back on it and I thought how, how, how wonderful that is and I hope we get back and I was very fortunate in 86 we got back again. But their journey back to the finals and a rematch with the Celtics would take a detour through Los Angeles.